think I've, Mr. Chairman, I think I've done all the preliminaries. Uh, I think okay. started then. All right, thank you, sir, for bearing with us. Um, a packed room. Um, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Board of Liquor License Commissioners for Baltimore City's hearing on August 26, 2021. Um, oops, that's the wrong file. Share file. Paul, give me a second. There we go. Busy morning. My name is Nicholas Blendy. I'm the Deputy Executive Secretary of the Board of Liquor License Commissioners for Baltimore City, and welcome. Today's hearing is being held virtually and on the WebEx platform. You can see the outline of things that I'm going to go over right now, and uh, then we will move on to the docket. WebEx is an online meeting platform that the city of Baltimore uses to conduct all its virtual meetings at present. The board of estimates, the city council and the planning department are using WebEx to hold virtual meetings since the outbreak of COVID-19. Uh, to fully utilize the WebEx system, members of the general public should have access to a, a laptop, an iPad, a smartphone or similar device that has camera and microphone capabilities. If you don't have microphone capabilities on your electronic device that broadcasts your uh, video, then you can use the phone number that's provided below and sort of work with two devices. Um, to participate in the WebEx meeting, members are asked to download the app through their smartphones and click on the following link. Uh, you can see that on the PowerPoint presentation. We suggest that if you're going to use your smartphone, your iPad, similar device, that you have downloaded the application and tested it prior to the hearing date and uh, to make sure that everything works. And as I noted above, if a member of the public doesn't have access to the com computer, but what wishes to listen live, uh, they may call into the number below. Uh, you may listen only at that point because obviously you don't have video capabilities. Um, copies of today's short docket, which provide a brief description of the cases before the board, as well as the long docket, which includes all the application materials that were contained therein, can be found on our website under hyperlinks for today's date, August 26, 2021. The board is observing a 48 hour rule for online hearings for evidence, meaning all evidence to be considered by the board today um, beyond testimony, oral testimony uh, had to have been submitted 48 hours before today, uh, today's hearing. That's obviously 11 a.m. on Tuesday, August 24th, 2021. Uh, all of the evidence should always be submitted to our assistant executive secretary via her email address, which is located on the screen and we are not accepting documents in person. Um, all amendments to any application that is made by applicants or their representatives will not be uh, accepted after August 12th for today's hearing. And if anyone uh, attempts to or offer an amendment today, that case will immediately be postponed. In addition to the posting of today's docket online, licensees and applicants are mailed a letter, uh, have been mailed a letter that instructs them of the date and time of their virtual hearing. Um, Next matters. So how today will work, uh, per, uh, I'm going to, I, the Deputy Executive Secretary, are reading these preliminary instructions and we'll go over the general ground rules shortly. I'll be calling the cases listed in order on the short docket. Um, I'll then ask the applicant and or his representative uh, or her representative to identify themselves and if applicable, have the applicant and any witnesses be sworn in. All testimony has to be taken under oath here. Um, the board will provide an opportunity for the applicant and his or her representative to present their case to the board. The board may ask questions and also the attorney uh, of the attorney or the applicant um, and the attorney and their uh, or applicant are free to ask questions of any other witness that may be testifying today, as well as the board can do. Uh, upon the conclusion of the case that is presented by the applicant, the chairman will uh, ask me to ask individuals who are on the call if they would like to testify in support or opposition to the application. At that point, I will ask you to use the raise your hand feature to be recognized. You'll need to identify yourselves and be sworn in before you can testify. Again, uh, as a reminder, anyone who wishes to testify is subject to potential questioning uh, by the board and or uh, cross-examination by uh, the attorney or the applicant. And remember, if you only have access to a phone, you are not able to testify. The court reporter does need to have video in order to uh, administer the oath. After all testimony and evidence is presented to the board, 
The board will then vote on the application as presented before them. Uh, the assistant executive secretary uh, shall then read exhibits into the record. The board is not authorized to discuss any non-case related matters today. The, uh, the board is sitting in its quasi judicial capacity this morning and is authorized only to hear evidence and testimony related to the cases that are on today's docket. The board's not authorized to discuss any other cases or any other policy matters during today's hearing. The ground rules. We ask that you please mute yourself when you're not speaking to minimize feedback and extra noise. As I've said already, please identify yourself and state the spelling of your name for our court reporter. Uh, before you speak, we ask that you speak slowly and clearly so that the court reporter and the board can understand exactly what is being said and who is saying it. And I do note that this event is running live on Charm TV and that our court reporter is here at present uh, and taking recording. Um, individuals who use profanity are disrespectful or unruly may be expelled from today's hearing. All attendees, applicants, licensees, members of the public who wish to provide testimony must be sworn, as I've stated. No physical evidence is taken today, as I've stated, and absolutely no amendments can be uh, made during today's hearing. It would result in an automatic postponement. Helpful tips, we ask you to be prepared. Uh, please have read the materials uh, on the docket ahead of time. Test your video conferencing to make sure that the video works, the audio works. We ask that you identify a, a good location that's quiet, good light, a strong internet connection so that uh, the board and the members of the public who are watching can see and hear you clearly. We ask that you please be present and don't multitask um, so that you're ready to go when we get to the matter that is interest to you. And above all, we ask that you please do be patient with yourself and others. We know that technology is wonderful, but sometimes results in some things we have to work through. Uh, the short docket for today's hearing is up there. Uh, I do note that item number seven was uh, postponed to the September 2nd docket. And Mr. Chairman, I wanna note that I received um, an email from council for item number three requesting that that also be postponed to a later date. Okay, uh, I would grant that, thank you. Okay, so uh, item number three uh, has been postponed. Council and applicant, I will follow up uh, with you to identify a time at a future docket that is available for you. With that, I believe I have identified all the folks who are uh, in the room, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, and I think if you're prepared, we can move on to the first item on the docket. Let's begin. The first item on today's docket, applicant Sanjeev Kumar Gemeyer and Vivian D. Boone, Mount Everest Enterprise Inc. trading as Pepper's Liquors. The uh, premises is located at 5440 Reister's Town Road, Baltimore, Maryland, 21215. And this is an application to transfer ownership of a reissued BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license. Um, Mr. Or the applicant is rep represented by Mr. Yu, who I'm moving into the panel, Mr. Uh, Chairman and Commissioners. So he should be there, and I think we're ready to go. Ms. Yu, you want to identify yourself for the record, please? Turn, turn, turn your camera on. Uh, yes. C can you see me? Yes. Oh. Good morning, um, Mr. Chairperson and uh, commissioners. Uh, my name is Jay Yu, representing the applicant, Mr. Sanjeev uh, Gimeyer, and Ms. Vivian Doon, who's present in the car with me. <laughs> you wanna, you gonna have the test right or proper? Uh, if I may, I will proffer. Okay. If I may proceed. Please. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Gimayer is the 100% owner and he'll be the president, uh, secretary, and the treasurer. Uh, it's a close corporation. And also Ms. Vivian Boone will be the assistant secretary. She will not be given any uh, shares of the corporate stock. Um, Ms. Boone is a lifelong resident of Baltimore City. She has a clean record. Uh, she is currently working as a certified nurse assistant. Um, she is fully aware of the rules and regulations for Baltimore City Liquor Board. Uh, she has given a, a rules booklet. Um, 
and she understands the responsibilities of the resident agent licensee. Uh, Mr. Kimir uh, is also fully aware of the rules and regulations for Baltimore City Liquor Board. He is alcohol awareness certified. Uh, he has a clean record, is person of good moral character, and he has met with councilmen for the district, and also he met with the community leader, Ms. Eaton, and has entered into a uh, MOU, a sort of an agreement with the community to, uh, for the betterment of the community, uh, in, in the sense that uh, this uh, location does require uh, quite a bit of um, attention on the part of Mr. Sanjeev. So he understands that. So he already met with the community and the councilman so that he can work with the community. Um, and he has, uh, he will make sure that all of his employees are alcohol awareness certified and uh, he will be taking over the, the employees as is and he will be operating the business, you know, as his condition uh, and he will be making improvements to the premises. Uh, if the commissioners has any questions, Mr. Sanjeev is here. Uh, and has he agreed to have the terms of the MOU be part of his license? Yes. Uh, a copy again, will be this, submitted. Yeah. Uh, this location in the past has had some difficulties. Is he aware of them? Yes, he, he does. That's why he uh, met with the councilman and the community leader so that he, he can work out those issues continuously. Uh, so um, he, he didn't meet with the community. Okay. Uh, all right. Commissioners have any questions? I have none. No questions. Uh, do we have public comment, Mr. Blundy? Yes, at least Councilman Schleifer uh, has indicated he wishes to testify. So I'm going to ask if any other member besides Councilman Schleifer wishes to testify on this matter, please use the raise your hand feature in the WebEx platform. Uh, it is just Councilman Schleifer, so I will be moving him into the panel, Mr. Chairman. All right, let's swear him in. Uh, Councilman, if you can unmute yourself and turn your video on. Okay, hold on a second. The video should be coming on. Can you see me? Yes, yes let's swear you in. Okay, uh, please raise your right hand. Please raise your right hand. It's raised. Thank you. Um, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God or under penalty of perjury? Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Good morning, Councilman. What would you like to tell us about? Um, so just to quickly echo uh, what the applicant's attorney was saying, you know, I do appreciate the applicant's uh, willingness to uh, to meet. I, I did reach out when I saw this on the docket to let him know about a lot of the previous challenges that we're all aware of at this location. And so I wanted to make sure he was fully aware of that, but also inform him on the community's expectations of what would need to happen moving forward to be a good neighborhood partner and to work with the police department and the community association, all stakeholders. And so I, I'm very appreciative that they sent us a letter outlining what improvements and stuff they're willing to do and how they are going to address uh, the issues that were outlined. And so uh, for those reasons, I fully support uh, this application. Thank you, sir. Uh, the commissioners have any questions for the council? No, I do not. No questions. Okay, thank you. All right, well then on the basis of um, the materials contained in the application, Mr. Yu's proper uh, about uh, the applicants and about the intentions for this location. The uh, testimony of the councilman uh, and the other evidence presented, um, I would vote to approve the application to transfer ownership of this reissued BD7 um, beer, wine, and liquor license subject to the terms of the uh, memorandum of understanding with the community association to the extent that they are enforceable by law. Commissioner. Commissioner Guy, based upon a review of the evidence and the proffer of Mr. Yu and uh, Councilman uh, Schaefer, uh, I also would approve to approve the application to transfer ownership of the re reissued BD7 
BWL license uh, in conjunction with the uh, MOU as it was as it is presented. Based upon the proffer of Mr. Yu, the testimony of Councilman Schleifer, I too would vote to approve the transfer of ownership of this reissued BD7 uh, license uh, subject to the terms of the MOU to the extent that they're enforceable by law. Thank you, Ms. Russell. I call exhibits for the record, board exhibit number one, MOU, board exhibit two, alcohol burning certification. Thank you. Good luck to you folks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes this matter uh, before the board. Um, applicant and council will receive follow up instructions via mail explaining on how to complete the transfer of ownership. Mr. Chairman, uh, are you ready to move to the next matter? I am. Item number two on today's docket <clears throat> applicant Stephen W. Stansbury II, the One Sports Bar and Lounge LLC, trading as trade name pending. Premises is located at 4314 to 16 Curtis Avenue, Baltimore, Maryland, 21226. This is an application to transfer ownership with the continuation of live entertainment of a Class B beer, wine, and liquor license. Um, Mr. Stansbury is representing himself today, and I am moving him into the panel as we speak, Mr. Chairman. He should be there. Mr. Stansbury, we ask that you turn your um, video on if you have not yet. Yes, 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 yes. Please put your video and uh, unmute yourself. Yes, 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 yes. Not working. I'm here. Hello? Hello? Okay. All right, uh, please raise your right hand. Okay. Uh, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God or under a penalty of perjury? Yes. 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 Thank you. Right, Mr. Stansbury, I can't see you. Is there a reason? Can you see me? You're muted, yeah, Mr. Yeah, I... I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I do see him. Uh, he he shows up twice. I'm going to move one of his um, out of the panel, but he should be visible. He was a second ago, but now you are in. <laughs> now Doug's in. All right. So I do see Mr. Sansbury. No, I see yeah. you, Mr. He's wearing a white t-shirt. Yes, yes, yes. There he is. Okay. All right. Good morning. Technology. Good morning. Thanks everyone for being patient. <laughs> Nick, we just flip back to you. Uh, I think if you I think if you start questioning him, Mr. Chairman, uh, it'll jump over to him when you speak or when he speaks. All right. Good morning, Mr. Stansbury. Do you want to? Would you please tell us what your plans are uh, for this um, tavern on Curtis Avenue, please? Yes. Yes. Uh, my plans is um, I met with uh, Ms. Florida, City Council of that district, um, so, just to get um, advice. I'm getting a lot of. Yeah. Nick, Nick, is there is he on there twice? Because I can't hear a word he's saying. Yeah, I, I'm going to try muting uh, one of them and unmuting the other. So let's try that.
Hello? Hello? That Hello? sounds better right now. Okay, Mr. Stansbury, I can see you now, and I think I can hear you. Can okay. Can I hear him? Keeps going back to Nick, but um, I can't hear anybody. Are I can hear you. Okay. Are the other commissioners on? I don't see anyone else. Okay. Yes, I'm on. On, Mr. Chairman. Okay. All right. Can you guys hear us? I'm sorry. What? I don't know what's going on. Mr. Stansbury, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. You started to tell me that you met with the council representative? Yes, of that district and gave him my plans to be a uh, full-time licensee operator of the business. Mm -hmm. um, and she gave me some pretty good point as far as um, if I was to get the license back and what you do as far as security, running the business and getting with the community, letting, me know, letting them know my plans as far as opening uh, the and one sports you, park. Have you met with them? Yes, ma'am. I mean, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. I met with uh, Thursday, um, August the 12th, around 3.30 at City Hall. Okay. And did, the, did they voice support for your operation? Yes, sir. Okay. And which community organization is it? Um, which, well, it was the council, council, Miss Porter, the councilwoman. I'm gonna, meet with the, I'm gonna meet with the association um, once after I had my my hearing with you guys. I was gonna meet with the the community. Okay. But you don't know the name of the association? No, no, sir. Okay. Now, are you TIP certified, sir? Yes. Okay. And who who's going to be handling alcohol at this place? I am, sir. Just you. Yes, sir. Uh, and you you realize that the, the this location has had some difficulties with the board between 2014-2019? Yeah, there are violations, several of them. Um, I know when I had it had had the business, I only I guess recall two violations, and that was for trash through seven through two thousand seven. 2017 to 2019. I had two so violations and they was trash violations. Did you have this license previously? Yes, sir. Okay. And what happened? Yes, did you sell it? Uh, I fell in, no, I didn't sell it. I fell into some hardship and the license got transferred back over to the owner. Okay. Now I, I spoke with him. Wow. We agreed to, um, work things out and I'm going to be full time now as a uh, owner of the one sports bar. All right. And besides uh, having this operation in the past, what else have you done in your employment history? Yes, I was um, employed at UPS. For how long? Uh, about, about seven years. Okay. Uh, and what did you do for UPS? Um, I was a package handler slash driver. Okay. So you have a brown suit? Yes, yes. I wore that hot brown <laughs> suit. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, and you're familiar with our rules and regulations? Yes. Okay. Commissioners have questions for Mr. Stansbury? I have no questions for Mr. Stansbury. No questions, but Mr. Stansbury, I'm a little bit concerned that you had this license previously and had a couple of violations, and yet you don't know the community association uh, that you're about to engage in. So I would strongly encourage you to work with the community association and work with our community liaison to make sure that you're you're talking to all the right people. I'm sorry, sir. I can't hear you. Okay. Never. I, I'll, it's okay. Never mind. I'll take it up, uh, Mr. Commissioner. Um, so, um, uh, do we have public comment, Mr. Blendy? 
if any member of the public wishes to testify on this matter, please use the raise your hand feature in the WebEx platform. Mr. Chair, I do not see anyone who has raised their hand. All right. Mr. Stansbury, on the basis of the materials contained in the application and your testimony, uh, and with the condition that I'm going to ask our community liaison, Matt Ockhammer, to work with you to make a connection between you and the community association. Um, and the basis of your testimony that Councilwoman Porter is supporting you, I would vote to approve this application to transfer this uh, uh, Class B beer, wine, and liquor license to you. Um, Commissioners? Commissioner Guy, upon a review of the evidence and the testimony presented before the board this morning by Mr. Stansbury, I also would vote to approve uh, the transfer of ownership with continuation of live entertainment. Based upon the testimony of Mr. Uh, Salisbury, Stansbury, my apologies, and um, uh, his testimony that Councilwoman Porter is in support of this, uh, I too would approve the application to transfer ownership with continuation of live entertainment. Thank you, Ms. Russell. No, Zip is for the record. Okay, well, Ms. Stansbury, uh, the application is approved. Good luck to you, sir, and we'll ha we'll be in touch. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That concludes this matter before the board. Applicant will receive follow-up instructions via mail from this agency with uh, how to complete the transfer of ownership. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Mr. Chair, are you ready for the next matter? Yes. Uh, the third matter has been postponed as stated at the outset. So the next item before the board, I'll go ahead and move you, Mr. Stansbury. Give me a sec. There. There he's been moved out. The next matter before the board is applic or licensees of uh, Cheryl Adams and Adam Savage, Iguana Cantina LLC, trading as Baltimore Soundstage. Premises is located at 600 East Pratt Street, also known as 124 Marketplace, Baltimore, Maryland, 21202. And this is a request to out, add outdoor table service to a current uh, BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license. Licensees are represented by Mr. Priebus, who I'm not seeing. What happened there? I'm going to move Cheryl Adams into the panel. And there's Mr. Priebus into the panel. Everyone should right. be in, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Mr. Priebus, you want to identify yourself for the record, please? Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Harry Priebus on behalf of the licensees. Okay. Good morning. Board. Can you tell the board what the plans are for the outdoor table service? Yeah, of course. Um, so, this is a request for outdoor table service. Currently, they have the coronavirus temporary permit um, outside on the corner of Marketplace and Pratt, um, and they're asking to make it a permanent outdoor um, dining space. And how large is it? It's eight tables. About eight tables. Um, it comes about 10 feet off of the premises and runs about 35 long. Okay. Uh, and that's what they've been doing throughout this pandemic? Yes, that's correct, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, commissioners have any questions? No questions. Questions? We have public comment, Mr. Blendy. If any member of the public wishes to testify on this matter, please use the raise your hand feature in the WebEx platform. Mr. Chairman, I do not see any member who has raised their hand. Right. Mr. Priebus, then on the basis of the materials contained in the application and your proffer, um, I'd vote to approve the application to add outdoor table service to this BG7 beer, wine, and liquor license. Commissioner? Commissioner Guy. Commissioner Guy. Upon a review of the evidence and the proffer of Mr. Uh, Previous, I too would also vote to uh, approve the request to add outdoor table service. 
Uh, based upon the application and the proffer from Mr. Priebus, I too would uh, vote to approve the outdoor table service. Thank you, Ms. Russell. No exhibits for the record. Okay, thank you, Ms. Priebus. Thank you. Oh, uh, this is the report. Would I be able to get the name of the person with Mr. Priebus in the room? Yes, it's uh, Dave Adams Jr. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, Mr. Porter. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. That concludes this matter before the board. Uh, licensee will receive follow up and correspondence from this agency on how to complete adding the outdoor table service to your existing license. Mr. Chairman, are you ready for the next one? Yes. The next matter before the board on today's docket. Licensee or applicant Robert Klebon, Stuggies Incorporated, trading as Stuggies. Premises is located at 1928 Fleet Street, Baltimore, Maryland, 21231. This is an application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor restaurant license, and licensee is requesting delivery of alcoholic beverages. Um, licensee applicant is represented by Mr. Hurdle, and I have moved Mr. Hurdle into the um, panel, sir. Okay. Would you identify yourself for the record, please? Abraham Hurdle on behalf of Stuggies Inc., 1928 Fleet Street. With me is Mr. Stephen. Uh, do you want to proffer for us, Mr. Hurdle? Absolutely, Your Honor. Um, this is a request for a new license. The location previously had a new license about two and a half to three years ago. Um, it didn't work oh. out with the previous tenant. Oh, sorry. Would you be able to speak up? It's very faint. Sure. Um, can, you, can you hear me now? Or is it better? That's a little better. Um, the location previously had a new license issued about two and a half years ago. It was issued for a $500,000 spend and 75 seats. We are asking for the same new license to be issued. We have an appraisal that was sent over the other day for $547,000. There will be 75 seats inside the premises. Mr. Cleveland is familiar with the rules and regulations, knows he needs to order from wholesalers. He's got 16 years experience in the business, and I believe 11 years in Baltimore, 11 years in Baltimore. 11 years in Baltimore. So he's very familiar with the area as well as this location. He looks forward to opening and operating. And is he tip certified and will his staff be? Yes, they plan to hire about 10 people total and about five people full time. I believe all the full time people will be TAM certified. Okay. Um, Mr. Have any questions? I have none. No questions. Okay. Uh, do we have uh, public comment, Mr. Blendy? If any member of the public wishes to testify on this matter, please use the raise your hand feature in the WebEx platform. I do not see anyone who has raised their hand, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Hurdle, then on the basis of the materials contained in the application, your proper as well as the exhibits submitted, including the appraisal, um, I would vote to approve this application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor restaurant license with delivery of alcoholic beverages. Commissioners? Commissioner Guy, based upon the review of the evidence and the test and the proffer of um, Mr. Hurdle, I too would also vote to approve the application for the new Class B beer, wine, and liquor restaurant license and the delivery of alcoholic beverages. Based upon the proffer from Mr. Hurdle, the exhibits demonstrating the appraisal and the seating requirements being met, I too would vote to approve the new Class B license with the delivery of alcoholic beverages. Thank you, Ms. Russell. My call exhibit for the record, exhibit number one, capital investment breakdown. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Hurdle, thank you and good luck to your client. Thank you, uh, Chairman. Mr. Kadensky is going to be using my system. I believe he has six, seven, eight, and nine, but seven was postponed. He'll be stepping in in a moment. Okay. Thank you. That concludes this matter before the board. Uh, Applicant and counsel will receive follow up correspondence from this agency with instructions on how to complete obtaining their new class B beer, wine and liquor license. Um, Mr. Chairman, are we ready to move on. We are. 
The next item on the doc docket today, applicant CM Monique Carter, Ms. Carter's Place, LLC, trading as Ms. Carter's Place. Premises is located at 101 West Lexington Street, also known as one or known as 103 West Lexington Street, Baltimore, Maryland, 21201. This is an application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor restaurant license. Applicants requesting live entertainment, outdoor table service, off-premises catering, and delivering of alcoholic beverages. And as Mr. Hurdle indicated, uh, Mr. Kadensky is counsel for the applicant and is sitting there with applicant, I assume. That's that's correct. Melvin J. Kadensky, 320 North Charles Street, representing Ms. Carter, who's present with me. Uh, do you want to proffer, Mr. Kadensky? Yes, I would. And, uh, the board probably doesn't remember this, but um, this uh, an application was approved for this same location in either 2017 or 18 to a fellow named Chukes Okoro, who owned the property. If there were, some of us have been around for a while, remember this location was like right where the old Planters Peanuts was on um, on Lexington Street, um, and uh, Miss Carter is applying uh, for that same uh, space. Uh, she's lived in uh, Baltimore City for 37 years. She's um, been in the catering business, um, is familiar with the rules and regulations of the liquor board. Uh, she will have the alcohol awareness uh, for her and for all of her employees. Um, she has a full menu that's been submitted and uh, also the seating plan showing uh, 75 seats. An appraisal will come in because the place was built out for Mr. Chuk Sakura. We're waiting for the appraisal. I think that they have between two and three hundred thousand dollars, but she understands they'll have to be submitted um, in order for the license to be granted. She um, is uh, also requesting live entertainment, which says be very small and would probably have maybe uh, you know uh, a, a, an occasion, uh, one or two pieces that would be playing or maybe karaoke, but uh, no more than that. And uh, she is currently in the catering business at various locations and has a very strong following um and it really is her following is with the current ravens but some of the ravens have left including the uh, coop but she's with a lot of current ravens come to her other locations okay um thank you do the commissioners have questions no questions Mr. Guy? I have none. Okay. Do we have uh, public comment, Mr. Bundy? Uh, yes, at least one member has uh, indicated that they wish to testify. But apart from Kristen Mitchell from the Market Center Merchants, does any other member of the public wish to testify on this matter? If so, please use the raise your hand feature. I just see Ms. Mitchell, who I'm moving into the panel, uh, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Please turn your camera on if it's not Ms. Mitchell. Is she there? Can you speak up, Ms. Mitchell? Yeah, we can't hear you, we can see you. I can't see her or hear her. <laughs> if, you, uh, if you have a phone, you can dial in. I'll tell you the number. And because I can see her on the panel, uh, Mr. Chairman, so her video is on. Uh, I don't know why not, but the number is, oops, wrong way, up on the screen right here at the bottom. Uh, if you can see it on the platform and that's the access code and then um, you can sort of multitask and let me know your number are you dialing you dialed in are you 302 number is that you miss mitchell 302 yeah okay can, can, can i hear can you hear can you speak up miss mitchell into the phone i see I can hear you. Hold on. Okay, we can hear you now. Oh, you can? Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Oh. All right. All right Sorry let's, about that. Let's, let's swear her in, please. Apologize. Okay. We can't. Did I mute you, Miss Baranowski? 
Speak up, Ms. Baranowski. Now we can't hear the court reporter. <laughs> oh, this this is the reporter. Can you hear okay. me? Yes. Okay. Um, so I was actually kicked out. So I missed the whole, we did not get a recording for the whole beginning of um, number six. Um, so I did not get any of that recorded because I got kicked out. So I'm not sure how you want to proceed uh, did, with that. Uh, so, so Mr. Blendy, like when you started to introduce, because um, I got the wrap up for number five okay. studies. But then um, after that, I was kicked out of WebEx, um, I think something with our phone line or internet. Um, so I don't have a recording. Uh, um, for Mr. Mr. Kadensky, would it kill you to, to go through it again very briefly? No, 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 no. Nope. We're not going. no. Uh, let's swear the witness in. Okay. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, please raise your right hand. Please yep. raise your right hand. Okay. I, I um, have, yes. Okay. Um, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God or under penalty of perjury? Yes. Okay. okay. I do. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Ms. Mitchell. Were you uh, testifying in support or in opposition to the application? Uh, in support. Thank you. Okay. And I. Go ahead. I just wanted to say that I'm actually here on behalf of the Market Center Community Development Corporation, which is a 501c3 organization, and the board has voted to support this application. Thank you. Did you want to add anything else? No, just that we look forward to having a good working relationship with Ms. Carter and uh, look forward to having her in the neighborhood um, at this at this particular location. Okay, thank you. I hope it works out to be good for everyone. Um, okay, thank you. on the basis then of the materials contained in the application, the proffer from Mr. Kadensky and the testimony received, I vote to approve the application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor restaurant license with live entertainment, outdoor table service, off premises catering, and delivery of alcoholic beverages. Commissioners? Commissioner Guy, based upon a review of the evidence and the proffer of Mr. Kadensky, I also would vote to approve the application for the new Class B beer, wine, and liquor restaurant license and the entertainment, uh, and live entertainment and outdoor table service, off premises catering, and delivery of alcoholic beverages. Based upon the application, the proffer from Mr. Kudinski, the testimony from Ms. Mitchell, I too would vote to approve the new Class B license with live entertainment, outdoor table service off-premise catering and the delivery of alcoholic beverages. Thank you. Ms. Russell? No, Zip is for the record. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kudensky, Ms. Mitchell, uh, Ms. Carter. Good luck to you. Thank you very much. That concludes this matter before the board. Uh, counsel and applicant will receive follow-up correspondence from this agency with instructions on how to complete uh, obtaining your new Class B license. Um, Mr. Chairman, are we ready? We are. The next matter before the board uh, today is applicant Mark Dosick, James Alexander McCoy, and Jermaine Reese Lowry, Fells Point LB LLC, trading as Lucky Buns. Premises are located at 933 to 35 Fell Street, Baltimore, Maryland, 21231. This is an application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor restaurant license requesting outdoor table service off-premises catering and delivery of alcoholic beverages. Mr. Kadensky is the uh, counsel for the applicant and I'm moving applicants into the um, panel right now. Okay. Ms. Kadensky, you want to identify yourself again for the record, please? For the record, Melvin J. Kadensky, 320 North Charles Street, representing the applicants for 933 Fell Street. And who's with you, Mr. Kadensky? Well, they're, I think they're coming in. Um, Ms. Blen, Mr. Blen, do you have them? Mr. Dosick? Yeah, and I have uh, James Alexander McCoy and Mark Dosick, who I moved into the panel. Okay, thank you. Proceed by proper, Mr. Kadensky. So, if it's uh, please, uh, the board, uh, the gentlemen here are opening this business in uh, Fells Point, 
Um, some of us are probably um, old enough to remember, I used to be the old dead end saloon down there um, on Fell Street, and uh, they have uh, various locations uh, in um, the Washington, D.C. area. Uh, they met with uh, the uh, Fells Point Association by Zoom. I was uh, in on that conference. They answered most of their um, questions and inquiries on the situation. They had evaluation of the build out. This a license was approved there some years ago, I think, to Mr. Larry Silverstein, but they never, uh, they had to did the build out, never had a chance to open up. So a lot of the things were in place. Mr. Jonathan Milnick has done the uh, appraisal uh, in there, and the appraisal came in in a million eight. Uh, they seats 135 people. They have a, a full menu. Alcohol awareness certificate has been uh, submitted as part of the package. Um, they plan on uh, opening very shortly and would be a, a pretty good addition to that area um, down on uh, it's near Fell Street and Wolf Street. Actually, the building goes through from Fell Street to Wolf Street. They would have some outdoor tables uh, service out there. And will all the staff be certified as well? All the staff will be certified. The other individual that is just the uh, city uh, resident on the license, so she won't have any note in there, any participation in the business. Okay, thank you. Commissioners have questions? I have none. No questions. Uh, do we have anyone else who wishes to testify, Mr. Blundy? If any member of the public uh, wishes to testify on this matter before the board, please use the raise your hand feature uh, on the WebEx platform. Um, I do see Ms. Mitchell uh, has her hand raised. I assume that may be a legacy. Um, oh, if she's there, still there, bring her back in. All right. Ms. Mitchell, are you still here? Ms. Mitchell? Going. Going once. I, oh, I believe she's dropped off, uh, Mr. Chairman. Okay. So it was a legacy. No, no other commentary? Uh, I see no further members of the public who have used raise your hand on this one, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you. Ms. Cadenzi, then on the base of the materials containing the application, as well as your proper, uh, particularly um, the fact that they have uh, good experience and they've met with the Fells Point Association, I would vote to approve this application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor restaurant license with outdoor table service, off-premises catering, and delivery of alcoholic beverages. Commissioner? Commissioner Guy. Based upon a review of the evidence and the proffer of Mr. Kandinsky, I also would vote to approve the application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor restaurant license with outdoor table service, off-premises catering, and delivery of alcoholic beverages. Based upon the application, the proffer from Mr. Kandinsky, I too would approve the new Class B license uh, with outdoor table service, off-premise catering, and the delivery of alcoholic beverages. Thank you, Ms. Russell. I call Zippers for the record. Board Exhibit 1, Capital Investment. Exhibit number 2, Menu. 3, Seating Chart. And 4, Alcohol Awareness Certification. Um, thank you. Uh, so uh, that, that concludes it, Mr. Kadensky. Good luck to your clients. Uh, I hope this goes well. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. As the chair noted, that concludes this matter before the board. Uh, li licensee is, uh, and counsel will receive follow-up correspondence from this agency with instructions on how to complete obtaining their new license. Mr. Chairman, are we ready to move on? I am. The next item on today's docket, uh, the applicant Randolph Smith and John Gross III, 4212 Reisterstown Road, LLC, trading as Goldie's Deli and Carryout. Premises are located at uh, 6210 Reisterstown Road, Baltimore, Maryland, 21215. This is an application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor restaurant license. Uh, I believe uh, applicant is represented again by Mr. Kadensky, and I am moving Mr. Smith into the panel and do not see Mr. Gross. So, Mr. Kadensky? Well, for the record, Melvin J. Kadensky, 320 North Charles Street. I think what you're moving into the panel, both the applicants are here. That at their restaurant, they probably have 20 or plus people who uh, want to be in favor, I'll proffer their testimony. You may be able to see them uh, seated at the tables um, and you get a pretty good idea of the support they have. Uh, this is an application for a new class of B, beer, wine, and liquor license. Uh, the applicants have two operations at that location. One 
uh, is a uh, basically a deli carryout, and then on the other side of it is a sit-down restaurant that seats about 81 uh, people. They've been operating at that location uh, since 2019 through 2020. Um, they own the property that they're in. Uh, I submitted a packet of uh, pictures. I think are uh, very um, pictorially uh, appeasing to showing the the build out that they have there, uh, showing the uh, menu. Um, they have a, a petition from 150 uh, people from the neighborhood, and uh, two or three the barbershop and the church on that same uh, area there um, uh, is in favor. They've sent in their um, approval. Um, they've spent well over uh, 220 to almost uh, $300,000 for the build out, which will be submitted um, if the board would uh, approve, uh, showing they have the uh, capital investment. Uh, they will be alcohol uh, certified. I'm familiar with the rules and regulations of the liquor board, and um, as I say they've been in uh, that area for the last uh, two or three years. Okay. Uh, do, do the commissioners have questions for Mr. Kadansky? I don't at this time. Not at this time. All right. Do we have public comment, Mr. Blendy? Uh, we do. At least Councilman Schleifer has indicated he wishes to testify. Um, I will then ask if any other member of the public who's waiting in the attendee list, please use the raise your hand feature in the WebEx platform if you wish to be heard on this matter. Alternatively, Mr. Kadensky, you, you referenced some people. Do, do you know of any or your client know of any people who are on the WebEx that wish to testify? Names I should be looking for. Um, they wouldn't testify, but I think there's uh, I don't see them on the um, visual, but I think there was about 20 or 30 people at the restaurant. Um, then I couldn't bring them all down my office. I probably okay. could. I'd have to put Subway out of business. Um, that uh, okay. they're they're in favor, and, and I just thought the board would see that they have wide community uh, support there. Okay. The then, then, I've got the councilman in, Mr. Chairman, and no one else has put their hand up. All right, councilman. All right, can you see me? Not yet. There you are. Uh, and you're you're still under oath, is that right? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, why don't you tell us what you'd like to tell us about this location? Sure, so this location, uh, there's some time. There have been uh, another major crime related. Uh, Councilman, can you start again? You broke up. Yeah, when I have the camera on and the audio, it breaks up a little. You mind if I turn off the camera for a minute? Go ahead. All right, is that better? Yes. Okay, thanks. I'm not connected to Wi-Fi, so it doesn't it doesn't work properly. So what I was saying is this location uh, and this operation has been an issue for some time. Uh, there have been uh, shootings right there uh, next to the shopping center and other major crime-related drug dealing right in front of this location on a daily basis um, and many times the the dealers have been seen going into the establishment uh, when police have come by uh, and this establishment also has a pattern of non-compliance and just a disregard for the city and community last year their use and occupancy permits were held up they had op uh, due to open violation notices a lot of work has been done at this location without permits there have been events at this location um, and we've also received reports from community members uh, that there was liquor being sold out of coolers um, i personally visited this location uh, with the task force and had a conversation with one of the operators about the issues there uh, and to my knowledge uh, they have not followed up and addressed uh, any of these any of these requests um, i also requested uh, they follow up to meet and they've never contacted me to do so um, as you uh, have on record, there's the local community association, which is extremely active in that neighborhood, um, has opposed this license. Uh, what they had shared with me was that the, they felt that they were misled and lied to by whoever it is that was presenting to them at their community meeting. Additionally, uh, there's also a letter uh, from the Northwest Police District uh, that opposed this due, due to the crime concerns um, at this location and the lack of cooperation from the operator to be part of the solution. Um, I'm willing to work with this establishment to address the community's concerns. However, at this time, 
Uh, this operator has had ample opportunity to show his willingness to be a community asset. Instead, he's uh, disregarded the community stakeholders and city rules. Uh, so at this time, I strongly oppose this application. Um, Mr. Cadentia, we'll have any questions for the councilman. Who did you talk to at this location? I was one of the uh, one of the owners uh, was there at the time. And when were you there? How long ago were you there? What's that? How long ago were you there? Um, if I recall, I think it was uh, was it no? Um, it was the end of it was the end of uh, last year at the end of 2020. Uh, he should he should be very familiar. The whole task force came in there and had conversations with him. Um, well, the store actually I, held this up and wouldn't talk to us or let us look around until he was present. I, I got that, but do you understand that they have all the proper permits now and they've been operating as both a carryout and a restaurant uh, for the past year or so without incident? Well, they've been operating for the past year after they finally got the permits, after they were caught having not uh, gotten the proper permits prior to doing all the work and renovation to the location. And you, you mentioned there was a shooting. Where was the shooting? Because I wrote to the major on two occasions and I got no response from the major with any verification of anything that's happened with regard to these allegations. They advised me that they have had no problems there and you have 30 people in the restaurant now, 150 that sign petitions and you have people in that neighborhood that own the barbershop, uh, the uh, Potter's House and um, the, the grab and go towing who are all in favor. It seems like there's a disconnect here between what they're saying and what, if there's no verification of any of these incidents, then, I don't, and I wrote to Ms. Um, um, Cherniak uh, at Glen Neighborhood Improvement Association on two occasions, she's never uh, responded to me. So it's a little disingenuous to say that they have not done anything when they've reached out and uh, they have all these people in their uh, behalf and they want to run a legitimate restaurant. So I have no idea when you reached out to the major or the or the community president. Uh, I know I don't have any record of you reaching out to me. And I think that a after you have after you have a tremendous amount of distrust and lack of action from an operator um, who just starts ignoring the community instead of responding to them. I'm sorry that you know once an attorney comes and starts contacting them on on behalf of the operator, uh, they probably have zero trust, um, you know, to to work with you on that. So I apologize that 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 they hadn't responded to you had you reached out to me. I'm always willing uh, to work with any operator in my district. I I fully support small businesses, uh, and I want them to be successful uh, in my district. You heard one of the operators in a very challenging spot, a much more challenging spot than uh, than this location uh, that I fully supported their application, uh, the first uh, item on the docket today. And that was simply because they're willing to work with the community and they're willing to address uh, the concerns. And they were also willing to put that in writing. And I think that uh, with a single phone call to me, a single in-person meeting, we probably would have been able to work through those issues. I would be able to get the community to the table. And if the operator was willing to, um, to agree uh, to the most basic terms that that the community would need i'm sure they they probably would have gotten a letter of of support but none of that was done well now that's a little not fair because i contacted the board on two or three occasions regarding what was in the file you had not no correspondence or anything in the file indicating your position one way or the other what we were able to find was two letters one from glenn neighborhood improvement association but the latest one dated 7-2-21, where they said they were in favor, which is different than what you're, you're telling me uh, now. Yeah, they, they wrote a letter in support after, after they got the first meeting. And then once they found out that the application and they saw the application, which had different information and that uh, they were lied to by the applicant, they then sent the letter saying they withdraw that support and that they are opposed to this application. When was that date on that letter? It's November 14, 2020, Mr. Nancy, and let me just interject here. So, um, and there's a letter so dated I'm, July 2nd, 2021. You have a July approval letter from Glenn? I submitted it in my package. Yes, I did. And who signed, who signed that letter? Betty Cherniak. No. This last month? That's the what I got out of the liquor board file. Because uh, I don't have that in my package. Uh, I have the letter saying they rescind their approval from November. 
I had him delivered to the board on Friday, complete pictures, uh, petitions, letters of uh, support from the uh, people in the community, and a petition of 150 people, and asked that it be included in the record. I saw I saw the videos and those things. I didn't see that letter. That's what I'm saying. Um, that letter I got from the board, July, dated July 2nd. Do we have that in? Does Ms. Russell have that? Letter. Yes, you should have received the letter dated 7 to 2021 from Glen Neighborhood Approved Association. Do you mind reading it into the record, please? Sure. To whom it may concern, Randolph Smith, owner of Goldie's Curry Out at 6212 Rice Town Road, would like to serve beer and wine with meals at his restaurant. Mrs. Smith has approached Glen Neighborhood Associate Proven Association for approval and support for this request. After speaking with Mrs. Smith on the phone and being fully informed of the details of his request, which I have communicated to the GNIA Board of Directors. GNIA approves this request. We consider Mr. Smith and his business to be an asset to our community and, a very, and are very happy to help him obtain the liquor license. Please let me know if you need any further information. Thank you sincerely, Betty, Betty um, Kersnack, President of GNIA. Thank you, Ms. Russell. So, Councilman, it sounds like um, you weren't aware of that either. Uh, no, and the last correspondence that I have, and I'm trying to pull it up here, um, from Ms. Cherniak, uh, she even denies wanting to have a meeting about uh, this operator uh, because they're opposed to it. So I am trying to, to pull this, this up. It was, was a letter like November 14th, 2020. Are you talking about? In, in November of 2020, or, or that letters from 21? The letter that just read into the record was from last month. From last month? Yes, July of this year. So she's changed her mind a couple of times, it sounds like. Um, I, have, I, have not, I have not seen that letter. Um, but we have it in our file, as you heard, Ms. Russell just read it from our uh, liquor board files so and is the application is application now is it just for beer and wine uh like it stated in that letter it's been wine and liquor it's a beer wine and liquor application okay and what does the letter say she i believe referred to it as a beer and wine one but right and that was the point and that was a big point of contention with the community association was that they said at their community meeting they specifically asked if liquor was going to be included and the applicant told them it wasn't and so having it's here's I, I can't cross examine somebody that's not here and the very end of the sentence it says liquor license and i don't want to beat this to death because i know that the applicants are here they've been in business they're very well um treated by the people in, in the community they would work with the community group but it'd be a little disingenuous for all the people that have signed in favor and the people there at his restaurant you know, the Glenmore is only a community group where these other people are actually people who are frequent the establishment. And certainly um, they're here and they told me they'd be glad to meet with the councilman and with the lady from uh, the Improvement Association at any time in the future. But uh, all the people have signed and, and the menu and they haven't had any problems there. And if the major feels there were some problems there, he, he should have addressed my letters. Okay. Um. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how you can say there's there's not problems there. If you drive there um, any time of day or night, uh, you will see the drug dealing happening right out in front of that establishment. All right, so uh, let's do this. Um, I don't think that these um, uh, conflicts have been resolved to my satisfaction. I don't know how the other uh, commissioners feel yet, and I'll hear from them. Um, uh, it sounds like the councilman is willing to broker a, a, a meeting promptly and get everybody together and see if you can resolve these things. Is that correct, Councilman? Yes, absolutely. All right, so I think we should continue this case for 30 days, uh, give them a chance to do that and bring it back in, and hopefully we can approve it at that time. The committee, yeah. what are the right. well, uh, Mr. Chairman, before I, the only thing I would ask that is if the meeting be held at the location so that they can see the operation and that the major be there and bring any type of information that they have concerning any alleged drug dealing and uh, any uh, problems and that the people from the community be able to be there also. Well, 
uh, if the police department representative wants to attend, he certainly can. And I know that the councilman can contact him and see if he wants to. Um, the commissioners agree with that resolution? Yes, I, I agree with that. Uh, Mr. Chairman, based upon the councilman's testimony, I, I, I'm not prepared to support this at this time. I think that there's some significant concerns that need to be worked out. Right, let's continue it for 30 days and hopefully the councilman can get everybody together and they can come back with a more positive um, response. Uh, there were a lot of, Mr. Cassie, I'm not saying there weren't a lot of positive things that you put forward in, in your uh, package, um, but these uh, trepidations could lead to trouble if we don't get them resolved now. So I'd like to get it resolved now. So let's bring it back um, in 30 days, Mr. Blendy. Per the vote of the board at the chair's uh, suggestion, this item will be continued for at least 30 days and available at a hearing after 30 days. Uh, subs uh, subsequent to all of the things the chair has requested of the councilman and the applicant. Thank you. On you have yes. your uh, liaison for the liquor board, Matt uh, Ackenheimer, be at the meeting also. I promise. Uh, yeah. to we will ask him to do that yes thank you thank you then this matter is continued for at least 30 days um mr chairman are you ready for the last item on the docket yes let me move mr uh mr kadensky out and mr fogelman in the next item and the last item before the board today is applicant Tracy Ford, Ndolo's Cuisine LLC, trading as Ndolo's Cuisine. This is an application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor restaurant license and requesting off premises catering. A licensed premises is located at 123 North Clinton Street, Baltimore, Maryland, 21224. And I am also moving Tracy Ford into the panel. Mr. Fogelman is counsel, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Council, we identify yourself for the record, please. Tracy Ford. Mr. Fogelman. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Uh, Stephen W. Fogelman on behalf of the applicant, Tracy Ford. Your Honor, can you uh, see me and hear me? Yes, so let's uh, right. switch Ford in, okay? Thank you. Okay, um, please raise your right hand, Ms. Ford. Thank you. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God or under penalty of perjury? I do. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Fugman, you want to start with a proffer? Um, I mean, I, I do have a, a bit of a litany to go through to um, create the, uh, or to prove the necessary criteria for the issuance of this license. I'll try to be brief, Your Honor. Uh, I know you will. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Ford, uh, you are a resident of the Patterson Park neighborhood, isn't that right? Correct. How long have you been a resident there? For 20, 22 years now. All right, great. And uh, you have a family business at this point, isn't that right? Yes. Uh, you, your son, Victor Obongwa, and your daughter-in-law, in Dolo Tang, right? Correct. All right, and uh, your family had operated an Afro-Caribbean grocery uh, there at the corner of, of Clinton Street, isn't that right? Yes. All right, and um, you uh, and your son and daughter-in-law uh, rented a property at 123 North Clinton and uh, put significant renovations into it, did you not? Correct. All right, and in fact, uh, Y'all hired Jonathan Melnick auctioneers who came in and appraised the property, right? Yes. All right. And it was a total, uh, you all spent $672,550 to renovate the first floor dining bar and kitchen area, the second dining level bar and lounge area, furnitures and fixtures and equipment, right? Yes. Yes. All right. And uh, so I, I and the photos accompanying the appraisal, uh, they show new refrigerators, new hoods, new stoves, new cold storage units, right? Yes. All right. 
Uh, Your Honor, I move for the admission of the uh, appraisal as uh, Exhibit 1. It'll be received. Thank you. All right. And now, Ms. Uh, Ford, when you all began this project, uh, you thought that you had the necessary approvals you needed to use the second floor in the deck as a restaurant. Isn't that right? Right. All right. You later learned that you hadn't had such approvals, right? Right. All right. So you're not going to be using the second floor or the deck for customers or offering live entertainment until such time as you are approved for such use with the liquor board and zoning boards, right? We will not. Okay. And let's talk about your food. Um, where is the nearest place to dine on Afro-Caribbean food in your neighborhood? If there, there is not another place in our neighborhood. All right, and tell me about your customers. Where do they come from? Um, from all over Baltimore, from all over Baltimore County. So from many, many areas within the, um, uh, the greater Baltimore area. Okay, and I'm sorry, I went back up on the uh, uh, appraisal just for a minute. But the first floor has a seating for 85 persons. Isn't that right? Right. Okay. And uh, do you get locals who come in for this cuisine? Maybe. Yes, we do. Sure. We do. And were you legally permitted outdoor tables by housing during COVID-19? Uh, yes. Okay. Like any other restaurant. Right. Did you have any problems at all with the city regarding outdoor dining or anything like that? We did not. Okay. Um, now, since you opened, um, have your customers asked for a glass of wine or a beer with their meal? Frequently. Okay. Um, and do you ever expect to sell more than 50% alcohol or less than 50% no. food? No, never. All right. And do you understand that in the 46th district, the liquor board requires a sworn declaration from your accountant each and every year detailing your month monthly receipts? Right. Yes, I do. All right, and you realize that he has to, he or she has to swear under oath that your receipts are more than fifty percent of food sales, right? Correct. All right, let's talk about a, a brief history with the neighbors, Miss Ford. Um, they obviously had a problem uh, with a bar that was re the license was revoked in two thousand fifteen at that location, right? Right. Right. All right, and I think that former licensee is technically still your landlord, right? They are. All right. Does that person have any control over your business or, the, or, or your business plan or share in any profits or have anything to do with your business? They do not. All right. And in fact, you, your son and daughter-in-law have been in discussions to purchase that building from that person. Isn't that right? Right. Right. All right. So let's um, talk about um, an incident that occurred in 2019 um, as you had applied for a liquor license. Uh, did um, did you all rent the space to one night for one night to somebody for an event? Fortunately, yes. Okay, and in fact, that person had a few bottles of liquor, and it turned out was trying to sell drinks. Yes. All right, and um, your son and daughter-in-law responded to the location once the social club task force showed up. Isn't that right? Right. And it was in fact your family that shut down that event. Isn't that correct? Yes. And have you ever rented that place out again after that? We have not. Do you feel like it was a lesson learned? Definitely. Definitely. Will there ever be anyone in that place again without your direct supervision? They will not. Okay. Will and, involved and, and make sure it's legal. All right. And then what about the allegations of a March 2019 event that was mentioned? Did you have any event with alcohol in March of 2019? We, we did not. All right. And what about a Super Bowl party in February 2020 with alcohol? Did that party no. ever happen? That did not happen. Okay. Because by that time, you all knew the rules, right? Correct. Correct. Okay. Now, um, would you say that the neighbors on your block have been very supportive? Very much so. All right. They've signed letters of support, almost half of the houses on the block? Yes. All right. Let's uh, talk about the charitable work that your family has done through this restaurant. Tell me about Giving Saturday, um, Ms. Ford. So on, on those days, we work hard to, um, we provide food, we provide resources, do HIV testing for folks um, on Giving Saturdays, and, um, and work to connect folks with local um, 
non for profits in the area so that people are being able to increase the amount of resources that they have available. And, and, and those are predominantly people in our within our, our neighborhood, within walking distance of, of our location. All right, and in just the last two and a half years, you've had over six charitable events at the restaurant. Is that right? All right, and in fact, you've supported our Rights, Our Lives Foundation, the Oral Foundation, right? Right, right, and, yes. All right, and the Big Steps Outreach Network for HIV prevention? Yes. yes. Have you also offered mental health um, referrals from the Good Access, Cause yes. Circle? Yes, access to mental health services and referrals, yes. All right, and you've reached, uh, you've reached the community, neighbors <laughs> and other people. Who, you provided food, clothing, and toys, isn't that right? Food, clothing, toys, and school supplies, yes. And you even provided free HIV testing, isn't that right? That is correct, yes. And even brief dental exams by licensed professionals. Yes. All right, and at these events, you have about 100 or 150 people, right? Yes. And you also have been running back to school charitable events, isn't that right, for the last three years? Correct, correct. And you no, give out... I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say we give out backpacks, school supplies, as well as computer tablets. And you've given out over 150 book bags every year, right? Right. All right. Um, also, um, tell me about that block. Is there a lot of trash on that block? There had been in the past. We've worked really hard to, to try to keep it clean and working with our neighbors to keep that area clean. All right. And I don't live too far from there, but I remember last summer, the city was not picking up trash in Highland Town. What did y'all exactly. do then? So we worked with neighbors, with partners to, to coordinate a, um, a, um, a sidewalk and alley cleanup so that um, we were going through, there was lots of rats um, climbing the walls and trash everywhere. And so we worked to, to you know, supplement what the city was unable to do in terms of trash pickup and clean up that area. All right, and um, do you um, think parking will be a problem if you're granted a liquor license? No, we um, we have um, worked and, and purchased the garages across the street from us to accommodate parking because we know that was one of the concerns that our neighbors had. All right, and did you sit down with uh, some members of the Patterson Park Neighborhood Association last March? We did have we did have a sit down and conversation with them. All right, and um, did uh, the, the PPNA send us some sample memorandum of understanding? Yes. All right, and did you in fact sign a memorandum of understanding? I did sign an MOU. And you are willing to abide by all of those terms therein, right? Yes. Okay, and Ms. Ford, what, do you have concerns about your business if, if you're not able to acquire a Class B restaurant license from this board? Yes, I mean, the, the culture of the food, so like you said, this is African Caribbean food, and it's kind of customary to have um, an alcoholic beverage with the food. And it's, so right now, people enjoy the food, and a lot of people are coming from the food, but people who want to sit down and eat frequently ask for an alcoholic beverage with it. And it's, it's um, as, we, as you know, we open back up, our ability to have sit down traditional sit down meals without alcohol will impact the business. All right, and uh, Your Honor, I would ask that we move in to uh, evidence uh, exhibits two and three, photographs of the Clinton neighbor Clinton Street neighborhood cleanup and the Giving Saturday photos. I'll be received. Thank you, uh, and. Um, once again, could you just describe your menu for me very quickly, Ms. Ford? So we have um, uh, chicken with gravy, we have oxtail, we have fish, uh, we have um, beef chips. So it's, um, again, it's a Afro-Caribbean style, so you can have it in various degrees of heat, but it's generally pretty hot, um, mm -hmm. and, uh, as well as with plantains and um, fried rice on the stove. All right, thank you. I um, will move for the admission of the menu. Be received. All right, and uh, are there a lot of dining choices up there in that far-flung corner of Northeast Patterson Park? <laughs> no, there's not. Okay, 
Um, so you believe you offer um, some convenience uh, and something nice for the neighbors, don't you? Yes, it's a unique experience for that area. All right, and uh, you and your family had some folks sign letters of support, isn't that right? Yes. All right, and one councilman, Antonio Glover, has signed a letter in support of your uh, establishment receiving a liquor license? Yes. Okay, and again, you have uh, signatures from many people who live on the block of the 3200 block of Esther Place, right? Yes. And the restaurant is at the corner of Esther and North Clinton, right? Correct, yeah. All right, you also have many uh, yeah. residents of the 100 block of North Clinton, your very block, who have signed letters of support for this liquor license. Isn't that right? That is correct, yes. Yeah. All right, um, and nothing's changed in your application, no material changes? Correct. All right, thank you. Um, all right, I have no further questions of Ms. Ford at this time. All right, thank you. Do the uh, commissioners have any questions at this time? Uh, yes. Uh, my my question is: did I, did I understand you to say that you are, you will not be using the second floor or the roof uh, to to uh, to have uh, participants? You you will not be using that as part of your restaurant or or, or bar. Not until we get permission to do so. Okay, that's, that's the only question I had. No questions. All right, uh, do we have public comment, Mr. Blundy? I suppose I should un unmute myself. We do, Mr. Chairman. There are, I have identified earlier six persons who uh, wish to testify. David Workmeister, John Lesby, Matt Gonter, Quinn Hatton, Victoria Quashi, Stephanie Brown. Um, and if any other person wishes to testify, please use the raise your hand feature in the WebEx platform. And additionally, um, we should swear Chief Chris Amalis because he was uh, present the night of the event in question related to the social club task force. So right, well, yeah, let's, so uh, I understand what? Uh, I was just gonna suggest that um, I, my other witnesses played through before public comment. Oh, yeah. Uh, I didn't know you had additional witnesses. I do. Um, They're here in my office, uh, and there's some on the phone. Some of those witnesses are uh, for the applicant. Who are your witnesses, counsel? Uh, according to um, my client, there is a Quinn Hatton, Victoria okay. Quashi, Stephanie Brown, uh, and, oh, and I've got four, one, two, three, four, five witnesses here in my office. They're all going to be brief, Your Honor. Well, they're all also not going to be redundant. Uh, no, and neither, not at all. Neither public people. We're going to hear what people had to say once, and we're not going to hear it again. Uh, That's so correct. Put on your best witness. Okay. Uh, obviously, I'll turn this then, and let me just do the video so that I can you can see him. Okay. Can you right. see me and the witness, Your Honor? Yes. Let's swear him in. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Raise your right hand, sir. Okay, um, what is the name of the witness? Victor Abongwa. Victor Abongwa. A B O N G W A. Okay. A B O N G W A. Yes, V I C T O R, first name. Okay, great. Thank you. Sure. Um, okay. Do you uh, solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you gather under penalty of perjury? I do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Obongwa. You're the general manager of Indolo's Cuisine, isn't that right? It is. All right. And in fact, you and your mother uh, it, it, uh, paid for and contracted for the uh, appraisal and spent $672,550 to renovate this establishment. Did you not? Absolutely. You're also in the process of, of talks to purchase this building, right? Yes, we have a contract. All right, you understand the neighborhood? Oh, it's uh, hard. Sorry, it's hard to hear um, the witness. Okay, you're gonna have to speak up, okay. Mr. Obongwa. Okay, and uh, Mr. Obongwa, you're aware that there was a troubled history with a bar at that very location, right? Absolutely, I know. All right, and that person happens to be your landlord today. Yes. All right. Uh, do you have you learned any lessons 
from the failure of the landlord slash licensee? Absolutely. I realize that uh, his, his inability to collaborate with the neighborhood and actually the community and do what is best for the community is what causes failure. And I'm not willing to go down that path, uh, which is why in my own little way, we've been trying to do the things that uh, my mother did mention about, you know, the giving Saturday, Louder. about our giving Saturdays, you know, the back to school events, the, the community cleaning events, which we have in fact reached out to some of the members of the community. And just the last one that I actually did, I did reach out to one of the witnesses who will be coming up soon. And I told him I was going to do that. I actually walked door to door and knocked the door because the situation was getting out of hand. And those who came out, came out and helped and those who didn't, didn't. But so far, all we've had is, you know, a very cordial, uh, coexisting relationship with, you know, the members of the community, other business owners who are here as well. So we don't really see ourselves as a problem. We see ourselves as a solution. We've come to a place which has been disregarded and, you know, a uh, very gentrified neighborhood, but we are coming in there trying to bring something which is not a part of that neighborhood. And in one of my posts, I had said, people kept asking, just like it's referenced in the Bible, can anything good come out of Jerusalem? You know, he's asking, can anything good come out of Highland Town? And absolutely. And that's what we are trying to do over there. And that's why instead of taking the money, spending it somewhere else, I've been in that neighborhood. I used to live on, on 309 with my mother, uh, 309 East Baltimore Street for many years before I moved to the county. But right now, that's a neighborhood that I spend 15, 17 hours of my time in. And I want to make sure that I have something in there that people don't have to drive out of that neighborhood. They can be in that neighborhood and enjoy that neighborhood and something that can actually attract people from other neighborhoods to come in there and enjoy how upscale it's looking. You know, Royal Farm did what they did there and we came in and we have basically matched it. And people looking from the outside cannot believe their eyes when they actually go into the building because they think it's a dump. But when they go in there, they're like, how did you even do this? And that's what we're hoping to do. Okay, and real briefly, uh, you made a mistake in September of 2019, did you not? I did. You rented uh, a place out and, and a guy was trying to sell drinks. I did, and I own up, I completely own up to that because up until that time, I did not even realize how serious the liquor business is and what is at stake with it. And I'm actually happy that did happen because if that hadn't happened, I would probably have had my liquor license and lost it the very next day because I do not know how serious, you know, the city takes uh, liquor licenses and all that. So in a part of me, it's extremely happy that happened, but also that is being used to kind of so fight against me. But at well, this point, I think it was a good thing it happened. Having learned that lesson, did you have a Super Bowl party? Absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely. And why was there an ad put into evidence from Facebook saying it was going to be a Super Bowl party so, at your place? Just like any restaurant and any establishment, you have promoters who, you know, try to get people into establishment. And a guy had come up saying he wanted to host a, a Super Bowl party. I don't even understand what a Super Bowl party is. So to that, I don't even know what the rules of the game are. I don't watch the Super Bowl. But when I realized that he was going to use it as a means to come in there, sell drinks and do other things, I told him no. And it was actually canceled. Matter of fact, uh, somebody from the city came in the day before and asked me about the event. He came with a flyer. I'm like, I showed him on my Facebook page. I was like, do you see it's canceled? And he's like, yeah, but we just got a report that something was like this was going to happen. That's why I came up and I said, no. And Mr. Obama, as a GM, you have been visited by city officials and the social club task force many times since that September incident. Yeah, Isn't that right? Yes. Have yes. you received any violations other than the September incident? No, I have 19. not. No. Okay. And there was no Halloween party. There was yeah. no cannabis Halloween party and there was no spiritual brunch either, right? No, there was not. Again, you, those events were canceled yes. once alcohol was Most mentioned. mentioned. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so you uh, and your mother and your wife got neighbors yes, to sir. sign petitions of support. Uh, would you say that you enjoy uh, almost unanimous support on your block? Absolutely. I have over 30 people on my block who signed that. So. All right. And these are your customers? These are my customers. Some of them are business owners, people we've collaborated with. And, you know, they've helped in our events. They've shown up. They absolutely support and, and want this, this to happen. Yes, yes. Right. And, and uh, Councilman Antonio Glover supports your request? Absolutely. And he's he the absolutely Councilman three. Uh, two blocks away. He actually showed up to one of our events. Mm -hmm. All right. And um, you um, understand the terms of the MOU that was uh, inter that your mother has signed? I do. All right. And you'll abide by all of those terms? Absolutely. Okay. And, and you understand that one of the arguments from the neighbors was that the prior owner violated the MOU. 
many, many times, right? Okay, um, so uh, this petition was filed over two and a half years ago. Isn't that right? It is. Yeah, um, so you've had a lot of time to learn from your mistakes, and I, uh, I have no further questions for you at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so do you have even briefer. Uh, oh, yes, Your Honor, they're, they're going to get briefer and briefer. Okay. Let me just call Brittany Adams. Oh, I'm sorry. I've got one who's got to get in the go to business in, in Pennsylvania. Mr. Jose Sebastian, J O S E S E B A S T A T I A N. Jose Sebastian, please raise your right hand, sir. Uh, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God or under penalty of perjury? Yes. All right, thank you. Very quickly, Mr. Sebastian, uh, you're a city resident of the 4400 block of East Chase Street, isn't that right? Yes. You own the business uh, next door to this location? Yes. And you grew up in this neighborhood, did you not? Yes. All right, and you grew up at 137 North Clinton Street? 131. 131. All right, uh, tell me what you know about the past and what you know about the present. Uh, what I know about the past is that um, that building has been a sore eye for our community for a long time. Speak up, sir. Um, that building has been a sore eye for um, the Clinton Street area for a long time. Uh, bad owners, uh, bad clientele. Um, since the time that Victor has moved in, um, it has been nothing but clean up. Um, the building actually, I rent the location right next door to it. Um, many a time before Victor moved in there, um, that building was used as a prostitute hotel, um, a drug shack or whatever. Um, I chased hundreds of people out of that building um, just because it looked bad for my business. Um, since the day that uh, um, they took over that building, it has been nothing but cleanups, uh, community outreach, um, number number of, of, of like book bag drives, food drives. Uh, it's he's 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 really. But what okay. about the customers, Mr. Sebastian? Uh, the customers are are what any business would want. Um, his customers often float over to my business, and um, while they're. Eating there, they get a car wash or get their car clean. Or, oh, wow. And Mr. Sebastian, uh, has anyone put uh, any kind of economic investment like this on this block? Never, never. Um, only Rory Farms uh, has has has. I mean, other than other than other than Rory Farms, uh, this 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 building has helped my business. Um, his business has actually um, overflowed and has done wonders for my business. Uh, anybody in any community will want establishment that looks like that in their in their area. Um, anybody will want uh, a neighbor like Victor and, um, and mom, I call her mom, uh, to be a part of their community. They have done nothing but uh, uh, help, uh, encourage. Uh, plenty of times I've talked to Victor said, uh, I can't do it in this neighborhood no more. Um, if I move to the county, my business will be much better. And um, he sat down next to me and said, "Bro, we we can help you. I can help you." Um, right. It's been it's it's been nothing but uh, a great partnership. In any community, if this man uh, will want to put a business, they'll be they'll be knocking at his door to to, to invest. Um, I didn't even know it was that much money into somewhere that was uh, a few years ago. Um, an abando, basically. All right, thank you. We we just got to move on. Okay, we have a lot of witnesses. Thank, thank you, Mr. Smash. I have no further questions. The board may have a question or two. Okay, you, sir. Now let's let's take the let's get the witnesses down. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Sebastian. Ms. Brittany Adams, B R I T T A N Y A D A M S. All right, can you see Miss Adams? Yes. Miss Adams, please raise your right hand. I do solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God or under penalty of perjury. You're going to have to speak uh, up, yeah, Ms. Adams. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Ms. Adams. You're the next door neighbor at 121 North Clinton Street, are you not? Uh, yes, I am. And you've lived there for four years, right? Have you had any problems whatsoever with uh, this establishment? 
I haven't had any problems. Everything has been all good for me. Um, uh, he keeps it clean. Um, it's not a lot of unnecessary trash that can be said for all his drug dealers and um, prostitutes. I have not <coughs> been moving down this further down the street for a conflict. Um, for all the toy drives and uh, book bag drives and uh, just giving back in general. I mean, like, I've been there before he has, and before he came there, it was a mess. And like, now that he's here, he is really brightened up the block. Um, I, I don't see anything wrong with, you know, him having what he needs. He's been giving back so much. I really think he deserves it. And um, he's cleaned up. I mean, it's been like, like when Corona was here, it was just so bad. Like he really, he did a number on, on, on the block. I live in. I, I feel like he deserved it. I'm not even going to. All right. And you know, your neighbors, right? And kids. you know Mr. Roberto Lorenzo at 3223 Esther Place? Yes. He's a mechanic? Yeah. At, and he signed for support, did he yeah. not? Yeah. And you know uh, Wendy's story at Wrong 120 North Clinton mm -hmm. Street across the street Our from you, kids right? Go to school together. Yep. The kids go to school together, and okay. she signed a petition of support. Yes. And you know Augie Quashel of 119 Clinton Street, your next door neighbor? Yes, I do. All right. He works for the hospital, mm -hmm. and he supported this. Yes. Um, and you're Brittany Adams of 121 North Clinton Street. <laughs> And, uh, you know, Mr. Acosta across the street at yes. 122, mm -hmm. and he supported mm -hmm. the establishment. Yes, yes. You also know uh, Freddie Matta at 112 North Clinton across the street. Yes. All right. And he also supports the establishment. Yes. You know uh, Carlos Valdez? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. And uh, he supports the establishment. Yes, and he used to work for my brother. Oh, okay. And then, you know, Ashley Feinster at, Feaster. 10 Feaster mm -hmm. at 105 North Clinton Street. Yes. And she supports the establishment. Absolutely. All right. And you know Hassan Marifi. Uh, at 124 North mm -hmm. Clinton Street. Yes. All right, and um, and and many others on on that block and on the adjoining block of Esther Place, right? Uh, because of him, I'm able to know all those people before that I used to just you know stick to myself. But he has basically brought us together and reunited us, and that's kind of good because I know who I'm dealing with and who my kids are dealing with. Victor has done a lot. I I really can say that, and I'm really appreciative of him being on that block because. If he wasn't, God knows what I'd be living next door. I have two little boys, 14 and 13. And I feel safe with him actually being there versus him not being there. All right, thank you. I have no further questions, Ms. Adams. Board may have a question or two, wait. Oh. No, Mr. Fogelman, can you just proffer what the other witnesses are gonna say? I can, I mean, I feel bad because they've been here in my office for hours, you know, waiting uh, to, to testify today. I have Ope Yemi, uh, uh, Abadje, who is the executive director of the nonprofit Our Rights, Our Lives. Uh, he would testify that he is grateful uh, for the multiple events uh, that the family has sponsored at Indolos uh, over six times in two and a half years, uh, donating free food, clothing, masks, flyers, um, and space for HIV prevention uh, materials to be distributed. Uh, he's right here in my office. He would. He would testify there too. Anybody else? Um, the uh, yes, um, Mr. Will Bauer, uh, who this board may know, uh, Mr. Bounder under, under a nickname. Uh, Mr. Bauer is also here in my office. He grew up in that neighborhood, and he would testify that uh, that was a block he wasn't even allowed to walk down just a few years ago, and he's seen a tremendous change on that block since the family has has moved in their business okay anyone else um yes uh, well no yeah obviously you know him as luke catelli your honor uh let's see uh now we have some witnesses on the phone your honor i mean i get the gist of the testimony so uh sure this, sure okay uh, so stephanie brown would testify in favor of the liquor license being granted to the establishment. I know she's on the phone. Victoria, Victoria Quashi is the next door neighbor of Miss Adams, lives two doors down from the restaurant. She would testify to all of the things that Miss Adams testified to as far as the improvement in the block uh, since uh, the family took over uh, the restaurant. I believe there's a Quinn Hatton on the phone who's also gonna speak in favor of the good works that have been done by this business and the community outreach. Okay, I think we understand the position. It's well put, okay. Um, can we go to the opposition now? Yes, Mr. Chairman. So the remaining folks that Mr. 
Fogelman has not referenced are that I have who may wish to testify are Matt Gonter, David Workmeister, Brian Sweeney, and Phoebe House, and John Wesby. So I'm going to move all any of those people in who wish to testify. And as I reference, um, Chief Chris and Mollis probably should also be. Um, well, why don't we start with the chief? Okay, let's swear him in. Okay. Um... All right, uh, Chief Chris Amalas, uh, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, to help you God or under penalty of perjury? Sorry, I think you're on mute. I apologize, I do. Thank you. Okay, and what did you want to offer, Chief? Um, I I don't have anything additional to offer. I just uh, was told to testify about the 2019 incident with the task force um yes um just like everyone said we did go we had information and complaints from an anonymous source saying that parties were being held on the second floor of the establishment um we did go uh, sure enough there was a party that was being um conducted uh one of the individuals um who said he was one of the owners was present and upstairs um alcohol was being served from a bar a register was there with cash a dj was there playing music um and there was a few customers uh we at that time the fire marshal and the housing authority did issue multiple fines and violations and the fire marshal uh gave them a assist and desist order and were was told that they were not to operate the second floor under any condition um after inspecting the rest of the premises, um, they, along with uh, the fire department, housing and Baltimore City Vice, uh, no alcohol was found in the lower level, but the, the second floor was set up um, from my experience um, as a nightclub with a full bar, DJ area, um, seating, bar stools and so forth. Were you told that it had been rented out for the evening? Um, I, I don't remember, uh, Your Honor, if that if I remember him telling us that. I do know that the, the only the only thing that flagged uh, from what uh, Mr. Fogelman said is is one of the owners was present at the time. They didn't have to arrive, so he was there and upstairs during the event. Now, if he was there um, supervising um, the person who had rented, or if it was his event, is unknown to me. And. Have, have you had any occasion or the social club task force had any occasion to be called back there? Um, we have not had any complaints since that um, date um, and with everything else and all the COVID violations, um, we have not made it back there. Okay. Mr. Fogelman, do you have any questions? Uh, no, thank you, Chief. Okay. Um, what, who else do we have, Mr. Blendy? Uh, I believe... Uh, the first person in opposition would be Matt Gonter. That's me. Um, would I be, okay, never mind. Um, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God or under penalty of perjury? I do. Oh, thank you. All right, Mr. Gonter, what are you gonna tell us? Okay, um, so- I'm sorry, I'm Matt Gaunt, Matthew Gonter. I am a resident of Patterson Park at 18 North Elwood Avenue. I have been a resident of the neighborhood for 16 years. Um, Mr. Fogelman has already gone over most of the um, the evidence that we have submitted in, in opposition to this, but I just want to add on to some of these things. Um, first, he cites that they did not know that they were not allowed to use the upstairs. I find that hard to believe because when we, we originally set, sent our opposition letter on behalf of PPNA, we cited that they had been using the upstairs second floor without a, without a permit, without a zoning permit or a use permit. Um, the hearing was supposed to have been held on September 12th, 2019. And then they asked for a continuation because of our, when they learned of our opposition, which I presume they found out through that letter that we sent in opposition to their liquor license request. Um, that 
file that violation that happened happened ex on exactly one day after the postponement on September 13th, 2019. So I find the um, I find that their um, explanation that they didn't know that it was illegal to be not to be credible at all. Um, anything else? Uh, yeah. Um, second, um, the uh, so they said that they didn't have the uh, Super Bowl party on February second, twenty twenty. I I can't attest to whether or not they actually did, but I will say that that event was advertised after the hearing the hearing postponement, and after the um, the shutdown by the uh, social club task force. Um, I will also add that. They still have an open violation notice from the Department of Housing and Community Development for that um, second floor violation that they were told to abate within 30 days. That was issued on September 30th, 2019. If you go into the database today, that violation notice is still active. And then finally, regarding that, um, if you go to their Facebook page today, you'll see a banner showing that there's seating on the outside that is clearly not sidewalk seating. That is seating on the second floor of the building. And that was that was that picture was actually posted a few weeks ago. Um, okay, a uh, few other things. Um, I've submitted some evidence to the board where they did have they did have a DJ they had DJ and live music, and also one where I presume it was Mr. Abangua. He did a uh, two and a half minute tour of his facilities where he showed the upstairs lounge. I mean, this was before the liquor board hearing, the original liquor board hearing. But he showed the upstairs lounge with with DJ set, with outdoor seating, and that stairwell that um, connects to that second floor. And one of the reasons that they are prohibited from having entertainment on that second or using that second floor is because it's so a fire violation. The basis of knowledge. But you, you're going to get the witness in a second. All right, thank you. My understanding of the fire code is that they have to have, have, to have one, more than one exit out of that second floor, and they only have one exit out of that to the sidewalk. It's a covered exit. Okay. You, is that it, Mr. Gunter? Uh Yes. All right. Mr. Fogelman, you have a question? I have no questions. Thank you. Okay. Do you have any other witnesses then, Mr. Blundy? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, John Wesby should be next. Good afternoon. Um, Mr. Wes. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God or under penalty of perjury? I do. Thank you. Mr. Westby, is there anything that you want to tell us that Mr. Contra did not already tell us? Well, commissioners, I'd, I'd like to give a little more insight uh, to the condition here on my block, on the unit block and the 100 block of North Clinton Street. My wife and I, we have three small kids. We've been residents here for almost 14 years. Our neighborhood is a fragile neighborhood with many homes that are, are being turned over uh, with renters. Um, it's it's an unstable block, Your Honor. And my fear is that adding a nightclub to an already fragile environment would further deteriorate the neighborhood. Um, as it's been stated uh, by many of the uh, witnesses that have spoke before, um, trash, um, drug dealing, uh, prostitution is is prevalent here on the block, and adding a nightclub, I I, I strongly feel could could harm us even further. Um, we have small children. We'd like to to be able to enjoy our home and and to feel safe in our neighborhood. Um, and again, alcohol brings an element to to our our neighborhood that just makes me very uneasy. And I hope you guys will give us some cover and, and, and allow the restaurant to happen. We, we're certainly for small businesses, but a bar and a nightclub that exists until two o'clock in the morning with people leaving, it, it just makes an unsafe environment. Okay, uh, Mr. Wesley, you have questions for Mr. Wesby? No, I have none. All right, who else do we have then, Mr. Blundy? Uh, we have uh, David Workmeister, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. Or good afternoon. Good afternoon. Let's swear you in. Okay. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, to help you God or under penalty of perjury? Yes. Thanks. 
Uh, my name is David Workmeister. I'm the president of the Patterson Park Neighborhood Association. Um, there were initially a number of concerns um, due to violations um, with the previous establishment. Um, when we saw a pattern of those violations continuing in 2019, um, we wrote a letter of opposition. Um, after we submitted the letter of opposition, um, Mr. Fogelman had reached out to uh, the Patterson Park Neighborhood Association asking for a meeting, um, which we accommodated. Um, several neighbors um, who had concerns and understood the history of that establishment attended a meeting at Nadolos. Um, the meeting quickly devolved into a shouting match um, with, uh, you know, cursing and accusations uh, flying all over the place, at which point um, I decided to pump the brakes on the meeting and uh, request that um, Steve and the, or Mr. Fogelman and uh, the ownership um, submit us their best response for uh, an MOU. Um, I sent them a sample MOU that we had used in the past with some other establishments, but we laid out that, you know, our expectations, if we were going to be supportive of a liquor license, um, we're going to have to be uh, much more um, stringent and um, that, that, you know, we had expectations that, um, you know, certain uh, accommodations were going to be made uh, in order to get our support. Um, the MOU that was sent back to me um, was insufficient. And after reviewing it with uh, Matt Ockhammer, uh on the, the Liquor Board Community li Liaison, most of the items in the MOU that they sent back to us were unenforceable. Um, and at that point, I decided that um, it would be best to uh, just continue communicating through through the liquor board and through Matt, um, you know, because of the way that the previous meeting had devolved. Um, you know, again, I am not opposed to a restaurant, um, but the concerns that we have regarding a um, a nightclub um, and a, a bar um, to me far outweigh um, you know, the, the, the considerable good work that, that they're doing. Um, so we've decided to submit uh, or uh, continue the, uh, the letter of opposition that we've submitted. In your judgment, is there uh, a potential basis for an MOU? Uh, could you repeat the question? I said, in your judgment, is there a potential basis for an MOU? A basis for an MOU? Can you, wh what do you mean by that? One that can be agreed upon. Um, at this point, I, I don't believe so because we we made it clear to them that um, we it gave them an opportunity to, to submit you know their best offer for an MOU, and they sent us back a document that was largely unenforceable. Yeah, I'm not quite sure I understand what you mean by that, but the uh, but you never went back to them again after that. Is that what you're telling me? No. No further negotiations. No. Ms. Bogman, you have questions? Yeah, I do. I do. First of all, um, Mr. Workmeister, thank you for accommodating that meeting. Um, I, in my memory serves me correctly, wasn't the only key term missing from our proposed MOU a requirement that you all wanted uh, to be able to inspect the restaurant's books once a month? No, I don't okay, recall so never... that being a... I don't recall that being a, a sticking point that we were looking for. Okay, I think I most of most of what we were looking for in terms of concessions had to do with um, uh, hours of operation, um, you know, concerns about, you know, selling liquor until 2 a.m., um, you know, uh, on a largely residential block, having a nightclub there. That was that was one of the big sticking points. Um, I can't remember everything else that we had talked about in that meeting in that it was almost two years ago, but um, I remember that being kind of the one of the largest concerns that we had. Was the closing times. Correct. Okay. Um, and, and Your Honor, I, I, I'll let the board decide if the contract or the agreement that Ms. Ford signed 
if those terms are unenforceable, I don't see anything unenforceable about it. And you're the arbiter of whether or not it's enforceable, not any other employee of the board. Um, and furthermore, um, my client, uh, my client agrees to abide by all the terms of the sign agreement that I've entered into evidence that I will have to now ask be moved into evidence and will agree to uh, make those license restrictions, Your Honor. But thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm confused about this MOU because I there hasn't been an MOU that we have uh, countersigned. I'm sorry, uh, uh, Mr. Kadinsky was calling. Me. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm just saying that if, if there's an MOU, it's not something that we have agreed to or countersigned or anything like that. Um, I we sent you a sample MOU from um, a you asked for a sample and I sent you a sample from one that we had submitted several years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and then what was sent back to me, we deemed was not sufficient. Um, so I, I'm not under the understanding that there is an MOU in place at all. Okay, I understand that. But, but in fact, you'll agree with me that all the terms of whatever we're going to call that document came right out of those MOU samples that you sent me, right? Yes, but we were also clear that we had other expectations beyond what was in some of the historical MOUs that we had agreed to. All right, we're not going to negotiate it here. Right. Okay, anything right. further? All right, thank you, uh, Mr. No. no, that's it. Uh, Mr. Workmeister, thank you. Uh, we have anybody else, Mr. Blendy? Um, Mr. Chairman, the only uh, folks that I see who haven't testified, actually, is Mr. Sweeney testifying in support or opposition? Brian Sweeney, are you in support or opposition? I, I'm uh, in opposition to uh, granting the request for this license. Okay, then this gentleman needs to be sworn, Mr. Chair. And let's bring him in. Mr. Sweeney, you need to turn your camera on. I'm sorry? If, if you wish to testify, you uh, you need to turn your video camera feature oh, on. on. I'm trying to get it. I've got yeah. pop-ups or there, you go. In, but okay. there I am. Okay. I swear, man, please. Okay. All right. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God or under penalty of perjury? Yes, I do. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Sweeney, thank you. Uh, what do you want to add? Well, I'm just going to offer that uh, I am in opposition to this uh, license request uh, being placed. I concur with both Matt Gonter and uh, Dave Workmeister that um, the uh, current management of this building has uh, not acted in faith with the um, wishes of the community or with the law. It uh, strains my understanding of the the timeline that you know they were um unaware about the second floor that the uh the various parties and things that have been uh, advertised in in you know social media that is open to public um that they were unaware that you know that they needed a liquor license that there are limitations on uh you know capacity there are limitations on the spaces that they're allowed to use um, therefore, uh, I, uh, I am in an opposition to this, uh, proposal. All right. Thanks. Ms. Bogelman, do you have any questions? Uh, no, thank you, Your Honor. Right, thank you, Mr. Sweeney. Uh, do we have anyone else, Mr. Blendy? Uh, Mr. Chairman, everyone else that has not yet been sworn were the witnesses referenced by Mr. Fogelman who would be in support. So I do not see any additional people who have not been referenced. If I am incorrect, uh, please use the raise your hand. And no, I do not see anyone else. Um, Phoebe House has her hand raised. Oh, she's, she's, didn't Phoebe House, wasn't she one of the people that you referenced, Mr. Fogelman? Or is she in opposition? I think she might be in opposition. Oh, okay, then, then we do have one more, Mr. Chairman. I apologize. All right. Hello, uh, can you guys see me? No. Uh, yeah. Yes. Can you see hey, me now? Yes. Where, okay. Ms. House? Hi. Um, please raise your right hand. Okay, sorry. Okay, there we go. Uh, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God or under penalty of perjury? I do. 
Thank you. Uh, so uh, Hal- I'm in. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just. What, what would you like to tell us? Oh, okay. Um, I'm in the opposition with this liquor license. I am a new homeowner here on North Clinton Street. I recently purchased the property um, the start of June when I had moved in. Uh, within that time, we've had another bar open up um, and have some nightlife spilling out into the street. Our street, uh, like referenced before, is a fragile area um, with a lot of good work that has happened You know, over the last years that has been cleaned up, I have seen um, from reference. But I think we are at that turning point where the street could be propelled into a much safer and cleaner area. Um, we do have a lot of renters and such that do in, uh, live in the area. Um, with a lot of new properties going up for sale. And I think nightlife and the uh, nightclub would drastically bring that down. Okay, anything else? Um, no, not this time. Mr. Fogelman? Uh, yes, just briefly, did you say you've lived uh, in the neighborhood for less than three months, Ms. House? Yes, I've recently moved there. Okay, thank you. I have no further questions. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, okay, so, uh, before we go to the commissioner's questions, Mr. Fogelman, I have a question for you. Yes, sir. Uh, so we've got a letter of opposition from the president of the state Senate and the entire delegation from the district. Um, what's, what's, what's your yeah. response? To that? You got it. Um, uh, quite frankly, look, I respect these folks for their public service, but it's clear from their letter that they didn't conduct any investigation or finding of facts They haven't indicated that they possess any independent knowledge of any fact and evidence in this matter. They simply parroted the concerns of a constituent or two. And in fact, their lead argument and number one out of two arguments is basically Shakespeare and the Merchant of Venice where the sins of the father are to be laid upon the children. In this case, the landlord sins. Uh, So I, you know, no, nobody came to the restaurant. You know, it, it's, I, I know they're, they're trying to do constituent service, but they make accusations in the letter. They don't say we were notified. They say they had illegal alcohol in uh, February of 2020. They had, it's almost like they're, they're implying they have direct knowledge, but clearly they don't, uh, Your Honor. So, um, I, I mean, I, I think that takes me to, uh, and I'd like to, to have a brief closing and, and talk a little bit more about that. Well, let me just see if the commissioners have other questions. Uh, commissioners? No, I don't have any questions right now. Mr. Fogelman, I, I'm struggling with this matter, and in part because there's clearly major distrust between the previous licensee, the current landlord, and the community. Mm-hmm. And in my opinion, the applicant um, in scheduling these events, despite them being canceled, ha- hasn't really helped his cause much. I mean, I appreciate the investment, mm-hmm. but really my, my very focused question is, why can't you guys get to an MOU where you reduce the hours? Uh, 6 a.m. to 2 a.m. is pretty pretty wide open in a neighborhood that we heard from Mr. Wesby and Ms. House is, is fragile. And so uh, I recognize that this licensee isn't going to do a quote unquote nightclub. There's not live entertainment, but they still are open until 2 a.m. Why, why couldn't we get to an MOU to address some of these issues? Um, we, well, with all due respect, and I did introduce that into, or I, I did send that evidence ahead. Um, we had a complete shutdown of communication. And I sent four emails to the liquor board uh, demonstrating that I had reached out to PPNA again and again and again about details on the MOU. And when they went completely dark, we did our own. Uh, but and I, I'd move to enter those now. Uh, they would be my exhibits, uh, Gmail, MOU, one, two, three, and four. And so it, it takes two to tango, Commissioner. Um, it's, I don't know what this is. Guys. Yeah, the time, the timing. We got to do two. Okay, so, okay. Um, so, Your Honor, um, I'm sorry, Commissioner, uh, you know, it, it, like I said, we we had more dialogue. And yes, the initial dialogue was was not good. Uh, but over the email and over the course of COVID, we, we may have been able to come to some uh, agreements that would have pleased the community more. And we're still willing to, to engage in that regard. Um, but we didn't want to simply 
cut hours on Saturday. I, I mean, if, if I remember correctly, I believe the community was even asking that we close early on Friday and Saturday, Friday and Saturday nights. And uh, that that's difficult for a business that's trying to make uh, a living. But uh, the applicant and her family are absolutely open minded. They know they need residents to support them if they are to succeed as a restaurant in that neighborhood. So there is no animosity whatsoever on the part of my clients. Uh, and I do believe uh, that further dialogue would be helpful. Um, on the other hand, um, I feel like the well has been poisoned and I feel like the, uh, the PPNA made it clear that Quinto G, the former name of the licensed business at that location had ruined that location forever. Um, and so there's just a lot of a lot of factors, Commissioner. But thank you for the question. And so, so, Mr. Chairman, if I could ask Mr. Workmeister, you know, you're now we're now in a position of a, of approving this without any restrictions, which we may end up doing. Would you, Mr. Workmeister, as president of the association, consider going back to the table and having a discussion? I would be open to having a discussion. The reason that the communication shut down was because of how poorly that initial meeting went. Um, and I mean, I, I, to be honest, I've never seen anything like it. Like it was, it was the complete opposite of a, uh, you know, a, a productive meeting. Um, and at that point, um, you know, given that we had made a request to submit, you know, uh, for for them to send us their best offer in terms of an MOU that was was not sufficient in terms of what we were looking for, we um, we chose to communicate moving forward through the liquor board and through our community liaison. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, um, Mr. Fogman, anything further? Um, yes, Your Honor. Thank you. I just want to go through the. Uh, opponents evidence and, and try to make some sense of what what that says um, the videos and the Facebook posts that they sit in they really don't show anything except what I've already said that uh, people wanted to have a party there and they they said no when they when when these Facebook posts would show what uh, these um, folks wanted to do with respect to the, the facility um, the applicant clearly was a little green about the regs of the city. Uh, they hoped to have live entertainment, the use of second floor and the deck, and they spent a lot of money on the place and they were proud of it. And that's why Mr. Ravong was walking off, showing off the second floor like a proud papa on his iPhone and putting on Facebook. There's something sinister about it. He just, did, at that time, didn't understand that he didn't automatically have live entertainment by law. And I've had a hundred clients over the past seven years who think you can just have live entertainment or I'll cut you a check and I've got live entertainment tonight. Um, so, you know, the other posts of these photos are pride of ownership, where the opposition wants you to think that, like I say, there's some sinister uh, motive. Um, you know, and that's the other thing. The PPNA, these folks know the laws. They know they're politicians. They know how to call 311. They know what time uh, you're not supposed to do construction noise. These are extremely well-heeled, well-educated people who know the way the city works. Not every business owner walks in to business with that kind of acumen. And certainly there was, you know, if you want to use sports metaphor, they stumbled out of the gate. They fumbled the first, you know, the snap on the first play from scrimmage. But to use another metaphor, it's not how you start the game. It's how you finish the game. Ignorance and I of feel the law. Like, I feel like things. these clients have learned so much. And not to mention, do you think that, that my client, is going to wantonly ever disregard any regulation again, knowing that these same well-heeled people may be wishing for her demise and be right on the phone to their elected officials and to the liquor board and zoning if they see anything that they think is not in compliance. I mean, we're talking about somebody who's gonna walk a very straight and narrow road because she has to. She's gonna to have to work twice as hard as the other licensees in this city. And, and, and let me say one other thing. I mean, this, I think this is extremely important because there's no evidence of violence, drugs, firearms, gangs, or any of the things that would give you and others grave concerns about granting uh, a liquor license here. And, and that's the thing. 
the, the board very much has the mechanisms in place to find, suspend, and revoke the applicant's license if she is not in compliance with the laws and regs at any time, and you have proof that you are not afraid to use them. This board just did that to Elrin Cone Troncaleno in Greektown this year and revoked their license. And you will use those enforcement mechanisms again and again if you need to. And again, um, you know, my client will be in the hot seat and will have to run a perfect show in order to avoid um, calls to your agency. But she's met the criteria under the code. And she asked this board for a chance to hold a restaurant license like hundreds of others of licensees that you've granted a chance to be competitive in our city in a very shaky restaurant industry. And I thank you so much for your extra time today, Your Honor, Commissioners. All right, thank you. Uh, so, Mr. Fogelman and all the other interested parties, including this board, um, we will take into consideration all the materials contained in the application, all the uh, documents that have been submitted as evidence um, by both sides in, uh, as part of this hearing this morning and the all the testimony that was received. Uh, in my judgment, um, I see a couple of things here. I see a location with a really bad history and a really bad reputation in the community um, being taken over by someone new. Um, and the new people immediately screwed up badly. Uh, they went out there and either rented or allowed this party to take place back in September of 1919. Did make it look to the whole community like they were going to operate just like the last guy. Uh, and that was a huge mistake. Uh, and then having so-called promoters promote other events that indicated they weren't going to abide by the rules of the liquor board, uh, and they tripled their bad mistake. So they really got off on the wrong foot. And they managed to antagonize uh, the leaders of our uh, legislative body and all the neighborhood association and everybody else. Uh, and it's a mess. Now, on the other hand, Ms. Ford presents a unique restaurant opportunity in this place that she says she wants to operate like a restaurant, not like a nightclub or uh, some loud establishment at 2 a.m. in the morning. Uh, and it and she does good things for the community, as does her son. So why that's all going to get lost in this mess, I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, the negotiations broke down between uh, Patterson Park Neighborhood Association and these people, and maybe they can never be resolved. I don't know. I don't understand why. You know, uh, Mr. Um, Workmeister says that the terms were unenforceable, but of course, if a licensee agrees to have the terms made part of its license, we can enforce all of them. Um, so I'm not sure what he meant by that. And it sounded like this licensee was willing to do that. But it sounds like to me, putting aside the mess they made, that the big problem are hours of operation, whether they're going to run a restaurant or whether they're going to run a nightclub. Um, now, it's a little odd for me that legislators are complaining about the hours of operation when they're the ones who set them. We don't set them. They they give 2 a.m. closings to Class B licenses. Uh, so they should change that law if that's a problem. Um, but in any event, the bottom You're line not, for me is I'm this, Mr. Buck, I'm not prepared to grant this until there's an agreement between the licensees and the neighborhood as that they can run this restaurant in the way that it ought to be run. So unless they're willing, your clients are willing to step back and make another shot at that. I'm going to reject the application. Commissioners. Commissioner Guy, uh, I, I, I find this a very difficult case. Uh, and without going, going back through step by step, you know, I agree with what the chairman just said. I, I would like to see both parties come together and, and come up with, with an agreement. Uh, I would hate to dismantle uh, what what the new occupant is trying to do because of the sins of the, the, the past occupant, you know? And, and just as the chairman said, there was a lot of, uh, I would say missteps in the beginning. Uh, but I still think that there's an opportunity for everybody to come to the table and, and to work out a workable agreement that everyone is 
uh, at least comfortable with. So uh, I, I would really like for this uh, to be set aside and give the both parties an opportunity to come together for an agreement. Because if you don't come to an agreement, I just think uh, something good will be lost uh, permanently. So uh, that's that's my, my leaning, that uh, the two parties will come together and, and try to work out an agreement. Thank you. I, you know, I think my colleagues uh, have really hit the nail on the head. Um, I very much appreciate the investment by the license, the applicant, I think. Uh, that is enormous and the testimony supporting that speaks for itself from those in support of the, of the uh, applicant. As I said before, there's major distrust between the previous licensee, the current landlord in the community, and this applicant just exacerbated it. Um, and I think that that was a, an enormous misstep. Uh, their poor history is a factor that I consider necessary in my evaluation of whether this applicant it would be a good licensee. I um, uh, would hope, and, and what concerns me as well is, as the chairman laid out, is the hours. I, you know, th this licensee has to determine if it's going to be a restaurant or a nightclub. If it's a nightclub, it's going to be a different discussion than it is if it's a restaurant, and uh, would strongly encourage uh, that. Uh, both sides sit together, sit down together and revisit the discussion. Uh, but uh, uh, currently, what, in terms of what's before us, I'm not prepared to approve this at all. All right. Uh, uh, your message is uh, received loud and clear, uh, Mr. Chairman, commissioners. Um, my client, uh, the, the general manager here, is already saying that they're willing to um, to close uh, 1 a.m. on Friday and Saturdays and midnight on Sunday through Thursday. Um, though I guess my only question is um, how long will you give us to negotiate? And secondly, um, if the negotiations, uh, if the requests are unreasonable, um, will you hear this matter uh, again for argument? But my, uh, my client is willing to make further concessions. And I'm telling you that, that they would have made concessions had there been further communication. But we weren't just going to say we're going to close at nine o'clock every night and, and throw it out there with, with no line, no open communication, Your Honor. Uh, let me just say this both to your clients and to Mr. Workmeister and his association. Um, we frequently approve licenses subject to the terms of uh, MOUs, as you both know, and we can enforce those terms if the licensee agrees to them uh, on the record. Um, so even if they're in variance with what the statute says, uh, so if, for example, they agreed to close at one or midnight, as opposed to a statute that says they're entitled to be open to two, uh, we can enforce that sort of thing. I would ask the association to understand that a new business struggling um, needs to balance those closing times and its ability to earn money to stay in business. I think you know that. Uh, and I'd ask the licensees to understand that the neighbors here have families and that they don't want a nightclub in the middle of their neighborhood, They, but they might appreciate a restaurant. So with those parameters in mind, if you can sit down again um, and give it a try, uh, we'll continue this uh, and look to hear from uh, you both as to when you think uh, you've reached some kind of an accord or if you absolutely cannot, and then we'll set it back in. So I would ask you to, uh, Mr. Fogelman and Mr. Workmeister, communicate with Mr. Blendy uh, within a few weeks and let him know where you stand, and then we will just determine it once and for all. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. And and Mr. Chairman, did uh, did you and the commissioners wish for the, um, I guess, the elected officials from the 46th delegation to have a representative or attend given their letter or not? I think we should communicate with them and tell them what we've done and see what their response is. I mean, yeah, of course, uh, one branch of the city government doesn't want to conflict with a branch of the state government, especially when you've got representatives from these areas of the city. Um, 
so we want them to be fully informed. We want to be transparent about what we're doing. We don't want them to think we're acting in defiance of what they're doing. Uh, but uh, we also want them to have open minds as well. Maybe um, they had a certain uh, view because, as I said, this whole thing got tainted early on by missteps. Uh, and maybe we can correct some of that if we work this out. Yeah, let them know. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Part. Chairman. Okay. Yes, sir. So then this matter uh, is continued pending the conditions outlined by the chair. Is that your ruling, Mr. Chairman? It is. Okay. The commissioners. I concur. I concur. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Russell, I put the exhibits oh, in. I call evidence for the record. Licensee exhibit number one, appraisal, exhibit number two, photos, exhibit number three, photos, four, menu, five, alcohol awareness certification, six, petition of support, seven, sample MOU, eight, emails, exhibits of opposition, one email from Michael Fish dated 8 3 2021 in opposition, two, two videos, three, letter from 46 district delegation dated 8 24 21 in opposition, and four, evidence of opposition package. And Thank if you. I may, may be heard very quickly, I I didn't hear anyone move for the admission in there that opposition materials, but I definitely didn't receive any email in opposition from a Michael Fish. Well, let's provide it to Mr. Fogelman so that we, everybody has a complete record, okay? Thank you. Yes, All sir, right. Mr. Thank Chair. You. All right. I think that concludes our docket for today, Mr. Blanton, doesn't it? You are correct, Mr. Chairman. So if you are prepared, I'm happy to read the adjournment announcement. Please do. That completes all matters before the board today. This board will be in recess until Thursday, September 2nd, 2021. The board shall post on its website, provide notice to applicants and or their attorneys and conduct a virtual hearing on this date. Please call our office at 410-396-4377 between the hours of 8.30 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. with any questions or concerns that you have on these matters or any other. Uh, that is all we have for you, uh, Mr. Chair and Commissioners. Thank you all. Thank Thank you to all the participants today. Uh, and I know everyone's acting in good faith. We're trying to resolve these things. Thank you to the commissioners, to our staff, and have a good day. Sure. Off the record.